Nathan, man, this is we 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 kind of pinched off episode one hundred, getting getting a last yes, minute. We, we pinched it off. We pinched it off, man. We just had <laughs> what, to what a way time. to put it. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, we really did. We had a we had a couple guests in mind, and, and traveling with those guests came up, and I think this is like the most last minute we've ever recorded. We're recording Wednesday. This is being released in two days. Um, but I, I'm excited for this one, like. Yeah. First, first of all, like retick lounge, one hundred episodes. That's pretty wild. Like, I, I didn't I, think it was going to go that long. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't I, think I, either I of us did. I, I think we had, like, I mean, after the forties, I was like, okay, we're still doing this, right? <laughs> and then you know what? Maybe when we got to like the forties and fifties, I was like, ah, oh, okay, we're like, this is just going to keep going. But um. Dude, I got ADHD. I don't do anything for this long. Like, this is not like my interests switch like this. Like, I didn't think that we I was... know with how your collections built over these last couple of years. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyways, uh, Nathan, congrats on episode 100. And for those of you that have been tuning in since day one or since yesterday, just want to say we appreciate your views and your comments and encouragement. Um, we, we wouldn't keep doing it if we didn't have some form of interest. So, yeah, thank you to everyone who's been consuming the Retick Lounge on really any level. Right. Uh, it, I, you know, and I had someone comment the other day that, that you know, I had someone message me and, you know, was saying I like the content and they're like, you need to, you know, it's the Retick Lounge, you know, get back to doing more Retick videos and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, I, 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 humbly and just kind of shared you know there's only so many husbandry topics or or you know just to do the care stuff you know in a podcast platform like we're not youtubers that are in the garage recording and showing people things and i don't know i think actually one of my favorite parts about this journey through 100 is switching it up and getting other people on that aren't in the retake industry and learning about other species and um but also just like um, you know, Aspen, having Aspen on and talking about wildlife photography and field herping. Um, yeah, stuff all, that, this, all the species spotlights that we've had right. and jumping into different different animals altogether. Um, then just some of the other segments, our reverse interviews, which we're doing tonight. Um, but yeah, it's just it's been cool to see how the podcast has grown over 100 episodes because it, it's nothing like I think either of us totally envisioned when we first started out i mean like we said earlier we, we weren't even totally imagining that we'd hit a, a hundred but here we are and let alone like what that would look like what what the content we would be putting out every week uh, right what the what the community looks like that we have behind us like our discord like we we talk about it all the time being just this super positive uplifting place and through 100 episodes and you know probably close to 100 people in and out of the retic lounge discord at this point like we've still managed to stay true to that so i mean we've set some goals and we've we've achieved achieved them through 100 so right i feel like by the time we get to 200 we're going to be like a strictly bullshit comedy podcast that doesn't talk anything about reptiles but we'll and see that's how it what goes. i've been gunning for the entire time so i think it's just going to be a natural progression but um <laughs> let me be, before we so just to introduce you guys uh if you guys are looking at the thumbnail and everything we are doing another reverse interview um you know and and honestly what better way to celebrate episode 100 than to have one of our longest standing patreon members come on and do a reverse interview um we're gonna I, have... I think he's I'm sorry everyone else on on the discord but he he may have like the best question set up like Oof. Oof. I, I think it's just I think it's just gonna be a fun time so yeah I'm excited I, for this one so like on the first reverse interview it was a uh someone one of our patreon members um Alessa was preparing for her first breeding season so it was breeding related the next one was Catherine and that was she was a brand new keeper of a retake so 
entry, you know, basic questions and furthering husbandry stuff. Luke is all over the place with deep dive questions about retakes, the retake industry, because he's been owning retakes for a while. Luke is actually from Scotland. It is four in the morning right now and he, over in Scotland and he's recording with us. So that's yeah, we've talked about awesome. how some of our guests have bent over backwards for us for right. like staying up late on the East Coast. But this is a record. Like, yeah. And and no, no sleep either. He's not mm-hmm. waking up early for us. So nope. Um, <laughs> Real quick, before we bring him on, I want to just give you guys an update. So for the last 100 episodes, Nathan and I have recorded at least one episode a week, getting you guys uh, fresh content every Friday. Um, I am going out of the country for a couple weeks. And so what we are going to be doing just to let you know. Can we talk about why you're going out of the country? What do you tell me? Why am I going out of the country, Nathan? I mean, the primary reason. I just think it's cute. It's oh, I mean, what is it? Going to see Taylor Swift. Yeah, we're going to Switzerland and Italy. Switzerland Lucas was is the a primary. Swifty. I just think it's cute. Listen, this was <laughs> a gift for my wife for her thirty-first birthday. It's it's Switzerland's both of our number one bucket list, and it just so happens it's that really we're Luke. we're Lucas's we're dream. we're great plant dude. Listen, I'm. <laughs> I'm a Swifty for the next month. Okay. This is going to be a great concert. Okay. Um, but no, I'm excited for that. Um, take, take some videos for me. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I think, uh, so yeah, I'm going to be out of the country for a couple weeks. Um, so here's what we're doing. Um, next week after this airs, uh, the reptile lounge network, YouTube channel is going to be releasing a Condro lounge episode on Monday to fulfill a weekly episode for the channel. Nathan, is, we're not going to do an episode of the Retake Lounge next week. Um, now, episode 101, that's going to happen two weeks from the time that this airs. Um, we are going to be bringing together um, all three of the History of Reticulated Python series, and we're going to combine it into a single episode. Um, and uh, you know, with that we did with uh, Glad McClellan. And uh, just to give you guys an update, if you guys don't know, uh, Glad McClellan has been working with the uh, the publishers of, of the person responsible for, you know, the, the complete series, complete Carpet Python, complete everything, right? Um, and uh, he has been working hard for over two years on getting us a reticulated Python book that is going to be by far the most comprehensive and accurate um, information on reticulated pythons from super dwarfs, dwarfs to mainlands to localities to history of morphs to import. I mean, it covers, there's not a single area it doesn't cover. He told me today that I could let you guys know that right now it's looking like, um, that book will be released and available for the first time at the Daytona show. Um, oh, what? Yeah. It was okay. almost, it was almost ready for Pomona. Um, but okay. it'll be ready for the Daytona show. So it's coming out soon. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. That's, to, new, that's news to me. So I'm excited about that. I, yeah, I want to order my copy. Is yeah. there a, is there a way we can order our copy? Like, I'm sure there'll be places to do it online. Below kind of a thing. Right. Um, and uh, we can even include that link on our episodes as well. Um, you know, I, because I, Glenn I was, was asking for me, myself personally, right the second, well, but you know, oh, oh no, I mean, no, I don't think copies are, I don't think they're doing early releases, but, um, you know, Glenn, okay. he was writing it, did send me some of the information and it's again, phenomenal. I mean, I, I feel like I've seen a little bit of it myself, but not Luke, as, not as much as you, I'm sure. Luke helped quite a, um, you know, early on I was helping out Glenn. I think Luke, he's, I'm pointing at him on my screen in the back seat, but he, he also helped with gathering a lot of information and connecting some people. So, um, so yeah, so for the next two weeks, next week, no retick lounge episode, we are, we're taking two weeks of a break. Um, and Got I think after on the back, buddy, we yeah, earned it. Yeah. I think after two weeks I can, I can chill out. Um, so, or after two weeks, after a hundred episodes, I could chill out. You ready? I'm ready. Want to get him on? All or right, you Luke. saying you're ready for a you, break? You said you want to get him on, so welcome, Okay, let's Luke. do it. Whether you've poured your heart and soul into your reptile business or you've just begun your business journey, AE Foundry has you covered with next level expertise in graphic design, motion graphics, videography, photography, and so much more. If you've been dying for a new logo for your reptile business, 
motion graphics for your current logo, a new website, or need assistance making your video podcast come to life, then listen carefully. AE Foundry's mission places storytelling at its core. AE Foundry believes that a distinctive story and background are the driving forces that set your brand apart. In today's market, consumers seek more than just products. They crave a connection built on trust with the brands they cherish. AE Foundry is committed to empowering small businesses and fostering authenticity that resonates with their consumers. Reach out to them and let them help you craft a visual narrative that helps establish a genuine and lasting connection with your audience. To contact AE Foundry, email them at aromero at aefoundry.com or on Instagram at aefoundry. When it comes to housing your retics, trust me, you're going to want an enclosure that will be just as strong and durable as your reticulated python. The Heartland Reptile Enclosure is next level tough and will outlive you and your retic by several generations. Heartland Reptile Enclosures are designed and manufactured out of powder-coated aluminum to provide the highest quality and longevity available in the reptile enclosure. What makes them even better is they are lighter than your PVC and plastic enclosures out there and are extremely tough. Stop playing around with plastic enclosures for your large constrictors and step up your enclosure game with the Heartland Reptile Enclosure. To inquire about one of these enclosures, speak to Jordan himself at Heartland Reptiles on Instagram, Facebook, and on TikTok. Here on TRL, we preach about the importance of using hooks, feeding tongs, and other tools with your reticulated python all the time. Animal Equipment by Stony not only has all the tools you need for any snake you keep, but they have the absolute best hooks on the market. What sets Animal Equipments by Stony's hooks apart from the other guys is their polycarbonate hook ends that provide a warm feel that won't disturb or bother your retic, ensuring a positive interaction from the get-go. Since 2008, AE Stony has been supplying zoos, herpetologists, and other animal professionals with their tools. It's time for you to step your hook game up and buy an AE Stony hook. To learn more and purchase one of their amazing products, visit aestony.com. So everyone, Luke McWilliam, uh, one of our oldest Patreon members, uh, a rabble rouser of sorts. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, Just whilst you're uh, talking about Glenn's book, um, I have been talking to him about getting copies to the UK and Europe. So if people are interested, uh, I guess they can contact me or one of you guys. Yeah, I okay. mean, somehow, but yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm excited for it. Luke, I know that you've gotten to see some of the information on there. It's 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 just, it's a. I think it does retix justice for once. For sure, for sure. Um, Luke, let's jump into um, your standard, who you are and how you got into reptiles and what led you to retics. And um, I hope that you're willing to talk about some of the really awesome retics that you're working with before we switch over to you interviewing us. Yeah, I, uh, my retics are my favorite thing to talk about, to be honest. Um, so I guess starting from the beginning, I was just really interested into dinosaurs, which, you know, everyone is walking with dinosaurs that kind of stuff came out when i was very very young um and I, as an offshoot i was just obsessed with reptiles and everything creepy crawly um you'd always see me in a bush in school looking at wood lice and uh, isopods and uh yeah when i was i'm not actually sure how old i was but i was probably between six and eight for Christmas, my mum got me a, uh, a leopard gecko, which so far hasn't been topped for best gift I have ever gotten. And um, she is named Gloria <laughs> after the um, the hippo from Madagascar that came out nice. around the same time. <laughs> and I still have her and she is a gem. So fast forward a few years, I you know get a few things, get... Uh, Sort of, I got out a little bit when I was in my early teens, and uh, I wanted to be cool, I guess. And then I uh, got back into it on my late teens, and that's when I really jumped headfirst into 
all reptiles, everything. And because, you know, I was almost an adult then. I had more adult money. I had more responsibilities. So, uh, yeah, then I got into, I think everyone knows what I'm talking about here, but it's uh, Jay Brewer's Motley Golden Child in the sun that's like blue as anything. Everyone who's outside of snakes who finds out I work with them is like, oh, do you have something like this? I'm like, yeah, I've, I've made something pretty similar. <laughs> yeah. Like that, that's the one snake everyone goes to. Everyone like it shines like a rainbow. Yeah. So that one and a uh, obviously a cow got okay. me. And I was like, I really want one of these, but I want it small. <laughs> and then... Snake. You know, I was like, okay, I'll wait for someone to, you know, make them small. And after a couple of years, I realized as I got more and more interested and more and more in the community, I realized that's not happening anytime soon. I, I've been waiting a long time, Luke. <laughs> We've been waiting. Luke, Lucas can tell you I've been waiting a long time. <laughs> Too oh, long. I, isn't it, I think Andrew Acevedo just produced the first 62.5% visual cows. Did or maybe, yeah. I wish I could spend time on social media. I I, I never thought I was ever going to say that, but yeah. I'm working so much that, that I, I'm I mean, now wishing I could spend time on social media. That's the only thing that keeps me going. And then it's when I see that one comment or post that pisses me off. I can't help it. I'm working on myself, guys, okay? Um, I'm a bit more picky. I want a golden child cow. That's what I want. Yeah. Hey, and I'm not going to stop. Understandable. Like um, what? Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. No, I was, I was thinking at, like I, I had a, just a, a freeze in my brain right there. I was like, what, what would a golden child cow look like? And I was like, Oh wait, no yellow. Okay. never mind. Uh, um, yeah. And then I got my first root tick, I think about three years ago. Uh, unfortunately had to sell her. It's been quite a journey with having retics whilst at university and, um, still have to sort of listen to your mum a little bit is uh really uncool and uh <laughs> so so you're you're in school right now yeah i'm at university you, you can't okay. tell by him taping up his banner on the back wall <laughs> i that's mean the, that's, that's, that's the, the most college I, way of hanging something up man i i still have some uh you know bad uh college tendencies about me too so I'm, you know what? When I'm working and I'm doing assessments on on clients, I'm gonna instead of asking them if they're they're attending college, I'm gonna just start using the word university so I can sound smarter because it sounds really smart. Like yeah. I attended university sounds way better than I attended college. We don't call it college here, so well, no, the like like, do. like college is like where you go to get drunk and party. University is where you go to get smart and drunk and party and. <laughs> Drunk and that, I'm 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 sure that trends just as well, especially in Scotland. <clears throat> Luke, do you mind me asking you? Um, you you got your first. What was what was your first retick? My first retick, I got two actually. Um, someone was like selling, me. selling, uh, just selling all of their retics, I guess. And so it was a, a one-year-old pure Kalatoa and uh, a one-year-old uh, 75% Super Dwarf, I believe, Lavender Hair Annery. Was the cow to a wild caught? No, no. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into your, we'll your wild caught stuff. Um, because, again, yeah. guys, he's in Scotland. Like, they, can, they can still get that stuff. Um, he, even though I, I, I know it's hard. On anything, anything fun in retic still. Well, I feel like recently it's gotten hard, right? Didn't some new yeah. regulations come up, or they they're tightened it up? Is is uh, yeah, it's quite difficult, um, and I'm not even going to begin to pretend that I know the difficulties. But I was uh, talking to a very big industry icon in the UK a few weeks ago at one of the shows, and some of the issues he's facing about importing is just absolutely ridiculous, um, and it's not even that you know, that we still have importation because I don't think I've had a wild caught animal that was imported after 2014. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It's just that there isn't the interest in them. Hmm. I wish, I, I wish I wasn't interested in, in them. <laughs> um, so 
um, you said you got back into it and you got your first couple. Oh, oh. what happened, Luke? His battery probably died. Hold on. No, you I'm back? Out. Oh, okay. He just dropped out for a second. Okay. Luke, by the way, do you have what your battery it? plugged in? Your Wait, are you on your laptop or phone? Fine. Okay. You got your battery plugged in. We didn't ask before. Okay. Um, yeah. So I wanted to ask you, um, prior to you getting those two retics, what, uh, so you had your leopard, uh, leopard gecko. What else were you keeping? What other species did you keep? And, and so right I want to jump into the like the stuff he keeps now, like just the, kind of the weird stuff that oh, besides for sure. the retakes. Dude, I, I want to sidebar real quick. I'm interrupting Luke. Sorry. Um, we we had our Patreon Zoom call meeting last Sunday, and and Luke joins and he's hopping on. He's walking down the beautiful streets of Scotland. Homeboy gets to his house, un- opens up a backpack, and probably unpacks how many Luke like twenty tarantulas. Yeah, like he's just walking down the side of the street with a backpack of 20 tarantulas and, you know, like new tarantula keeper. And he's like, oh, I think this one's really fucking deadly. Uh, my my palms were sweating the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for it cussing Luke's mom. Uh, my mom doesn't know I have those yet. So <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so um, on, on top of swearing for Luke's mom, who's maybe watching this, <laughs> he got thrown under the bus. Sorry, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, it's fine. It's fine. I was, I've actually named it after her. <laughs> <laughs> it's the personality, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. The big, the big evil one. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, no. Um, when I was a kid, I had a, a few different things. Stick and sex, obviously, a uh, pretty good staple. Um, and I had a corn snake. I had some terrapins. I had some cool parents, I guess. Uh, and I had a fire salamander, which are very nice. cool. They're very similar to your tiger salamanders, but uh, like black and yellow. It's pretty crazy. Um, and then I, you know, I got out and I just had my um, my leopard ge- uh, leopard gecko Gloria. And then I sort of got back into it just before COVID, maybe a little bit, a little bit before. Um, and it started off with invertebrates, very short-lived ones like mantises. Um, I want some mantises. They are very cool. They're yeah. very cool, but can be so annoying. <laughs> so annoying. They they um, eat their mates, don't they? Can do, yeah. Okay. I was never successful breeding them. I only got slugs or what like their equivalent. Okay. Um. Yeah, and then I um. I I got a, a few more leopard geckos. I absolutely love my leopard geckos. I think I have close to ten now. Um, they're all awesome. They all have their own personality, um, which I guess is a weird thing for a retic keeper to be really obsessed with. <laughs> is your is your basic leopard gecko? But yeah, no, I love them. And um, what's not there to love? I mean, they're they're pretty chill, and they look like they're they want to take over the world. Like that's everybody's inner. Like that's everybody's inner like ego. We wish we could be that grimacing and evil. Maybe yeah. not. I don't know. Maybe maybe some of us want to be kind. That's that's not what I looked at when getting into reptiles, but sure. <laughs> um and then I went through a bit of a Lucas phase where anything <laughs> shiny was awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> any any anything. Anything I was like, I, I want it, and I want it like now. Um, unfortunately, I never stooped as low as carpet pythons. Oh uh, my gosh, that's rude! <laughs> <laughs> I hope you know a big part of our listeners are Morelia people. They're coming in for you, dude. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then I, I eventually just yeah bit the bullet and got a, a retic, <laughs> and. Never look back. I am obsessed. So to to go on Nathan's part of this, what let's let's kind oh, of ru- oh, like what what is he keeping now? Yeah. So what are you what are you keeping now? And I mean, if you can, I'd love for you to start with the retic stuff because you have some really awesome awesome retics. Um, and then yeah, anything else that you are? I mean, again, you you've probably spread out to more different species and things quicker than I have over the last six months. No, so actually, I I really had a, a talking to myself and realized that 
I I used to be a Lucas, but now I'm moving towards a Nathan. You know, okay, I'm less is you. more. I'm proud of you. And you know, as much as there's so many awesome species out there that I would just love to have, that I don't have the time, I don't have the energy, and I don't have the love for them that like I do my my main ones. So, and it's just, you know, only keep what you love for sure. Um, so I now I'm pretty focused. So I'm going to start with those actually. So I have a fire salamander. I have a few leopard geckos who are in bioactives with just random cockroach species that somehow have established colonies <laughs> in nice. bearing corners and isopods are in there and um, uh, springtails. I have some transfers now <laughs> this guy just referred to a, a species he keeps are springtails well they're alive <laughs> they are yeah. yeah also springtails are cool you can get orange ones and violet ones okay i didn't know that that is cool yeah they're very cool uh, i don't have any of those yet so i only have the boring ones um and then yeah retix um, okay I love, even though they hate me sometimes. Yeah, it's a love hate for sure. Yeah, so uh, I think no, no Afrock anymore. No, no, that is a project that no, not a project. I realize this is going to be a little side tangent. I realized that there was about because um, the main breeder for the albino project sort of just got rid of all of their the whole clutch basically at once that were almost breeding age. And then I was talking to people and I realized I was racing about six people to breed albino Afrox. And that means six plus clutches of 66% albino Afrox that have terrible, like, well, they did have bad attitudes. You guys saw them. They're they're Afrox. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'll just wait for them to do it and I'll buy a baby because I only okay. wanted the, I wanted the, I wanted the albino baby. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to start with the main one, I guess, who's on the thumbnail, big old Bruce. Bruce. Uh, yeah. Uh, I love him. He's great. He, he hates me with a passion. He's sterile. Don't say that. Don't, someone said that to me the other day. I almost cried. <laughs> You'll get it. You'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I swear. Um, so, yeah, he was wild caught in Sumatra around uh, 2013, got imported um, then by um, Fila Retix, uh, Carsten Warner, who's a pretty big name in Retix, especially in Europe. Oh, yeah. That's someone I've been he's, looking he's, at since I got into Retix. He's the uh, Tambalonga guy. Yes. Yeah. He imported the original two. Yep. The only two. Yep. Crazy uh, that there's only ever been two imported Tambalongans ever. And they were both Calico, which is just beyond yeah. that. You, you want to talk about like probably one of the first localities that I would import if we opened up is Tambalongans. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. Um, well, also a Halmahera Island that no one's ever heard of would be pretty. Like are you, t- you talk about like the Maluku area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Tadori and yeah, all these yeah. other. Yeah, they're really cool. Yeah. Um, and then he sold him to uh, Aurora Retix, Enrico, who is the guy with the awesome Mochino Anthrax that everyone loves mm. on the nation. Um, he has some awesome projects as well. And then he sold him to uh, Casey Parker, Hayes Retix, who does all of the Aztec stuff, who then sold him to me. So he's had quite the journey through his 10 years of captivity. For those of you that like, uh, again, Bruce is what, if you, you might've heard this more floating around or like the possibility of it, but you know, the name that Bruce typically is to the people that have kept it is labyrinth. Um, it's about as, as similar to what he looks like in other species. Um, I'm really hoping you nail it. Um, Me too. That animal's stunning. 
you know, worst case scenario, if it just, if it keeps dunning out, just keep him in room temp, like 78 to 80 degrees, no hot spot and see if that helps. <laughs> just increase right. fertility rate. Honestly, I'm um, um, I'm getting friends to send me scent from their male retics that are like getting excited whilst they're pairing, because yeah. why not? Why not? <laughs> why exactly. Not? Um, but yeah, no, I love him, and I actually have I made myself a list a few years ago of my favorite morphs, like top ten. If I'm going to get into retics, which ones are on there, and. Bruce was like number three, and I thought I'd never get my hands on him, but and then I did. So he that's is. That's pretty damn cool. Even if you don't produce him, he's the only one that we've ever seen that looked like you own a literal one of a kind retick in the world. Um, yeah. That's pretty badass. Yeah, no, and I, I absolutely love him, even though he does not love me. I just have to leave him alone, basically. And the fact that you are a little chap when you wanted him and now you have him, it's great. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna be silent for I, a second. I had, <laughs> that, I, I, I had I to. was taking it in too. Um, <laughs> um, and then my other retics. I've got a bit of a an Aztec project going on. Uh, I want to make Aztec snows. Um, however, I go against everything I stand for, in the fact that I'm just shoving in as many other codons in there as possible. Which I know. I know. Bad. Bad. I don't, think, I, don't, but. I don't think it's bad. I, I feel like, you know, when it's a new when it's a new mutation, right? You yeah. got to know what looks good and what doesn't. Right? Yeah. So, why, why not? And I'm I'm happy with the females I used. I definitely didn't like slack off with getting cuz some of them were ex holdbacks and stuff like that. So, I'm very excited for that clutch. Um and then I've kept quite a few localities. I've kept uh uh Kalatoa, I've kept Karompa, I've kept Jampea, obviously Sumatran. Um I say quite a few, that's it, but <laughs> um I've seen I've seen most of the rest as well. So I do love a locality. That's one thing I've appreciated you is your locality interest. Um and uh just the fact that if, you've also kept wild caught wasn't. animals. If size wasn't such a motivator and all the small stuff didn't look so much alike, I would probably be there right with you guys. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, it, I totally get that, especially because I'm going to be honest, the most beautiful localities out there are not super dwarfs. Are giant. Yeah, they're huge. My, my favorite one up at, at Weston's was huge. A Sumatran. Yeah, oh, it was a Sumatran. Okay. Yeah. So you no. have a better memory than I do, and I was the one there gorgeous sumatran they're, they're uh, silver like like annery doesn't have anything on like their like they're blue like they're so silver they're blue yeah part of me wants to get a pure sumatran female for bruce to keep keep it all pure <laughs> it's like an itch in the back of my head but then again get a big a cage Sumatran female is going to be a yeah that's going to be something oh no kidding get get a big cage and start lifting <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, all right. I, I feel like we, 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 we know you enough now you're qualified. Yeah. Do you have any other questions about Luke before he jumps in and we do this reverse interview? Nathan? No, I'm pretty sure we're, I'm already going to have a nightmare with clips. So let's run it as long as we need to. Yeah. I was going to I mean, yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, I guess, you know, 100th episode well done guys uh how about we start with what is the future like what is the future of the network we also want to thank vivtech products for being an affiliate sponsor of the retic lounge stop by vivtech products for the best uv spectrum lighting on the market that will enhance and improve your snake's overall well-being and health visit vivtechproducts.com and use the code retic lounge 23 today for 15 percent off Again, visit vivtechproducts.com and use our affiliate code RETICLOUNGE23 today for 15% off. Looking for the perfect accessories for your hatchlings or juvenile retics? Look no further than Heli Guy Serpents. Our sponsor, Chris Sexton, is coming in hot with an amazing 3D printer, creating top-notch perches and other caging accessories for your beloved pets. 
Enrich your retics environment with their high quality products. Use our promo code TRL10 for a 10% discount on your purchase. Visit them today at heliguyserpents.com and start giving your pets the best. Heli Guy Serpents, the premier source for 3D printed caging accessories. Again, that's www.heliguyserpents.com and use our promo code TRL10 for 10% off all of your 3D printed accessories today. Oh, that's a good question. So didn't even like jump into retouch, but just like put us on the spot with the network. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Make sure you keep it in. Yeah. Lucas, um, do you want to start? Yeah. I mean, I'm so like to give you guys some background, like um, I thought about the, like I thought about the network and I brought up the idea to Nathan. Nathan, Nathan brought up some valid points that kind of like had both of us kind of just like in question about like doing it. Um, then I got into Condros. We had that interview with Bill Stiegel and Bill Stiegel was like, if you want to learn about a species that you love and you don't know much about, do a podcast. That's what he did. Um, and so, you know, at first it was going to be just a separate thing, but then I talked to Nathan again and I was like, Hey, like, you know, we, it, it's going to bring, you know, I was like the, the Condros community is thirsty for content. Like it's going to drive people to the retic stuff. It can help with growth. And there's, you know, th there's been a ton of, uh, Condro podcasts popping up that I've noticed. Yeah. There's three main ones. So like MJ has the, the up in the tree Tuesdays, and then there's the Condro bar room. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's the Condro lounge. Those are the three that are like just going kind of consistently. And then, you know, Bill Stiegel still has GTP keeper radio, um, that, they release an episode once in a while, but whenever they do, it's great. But, um, so I, I finally convinced Nathan, um, to, you know, there, there's the idea of like, how do we separate the Patreon? How do we like, what, what, what happens when like monetization becomes like, there's a lot of technicalities when you bring in other people. Um, so I don't know my vision for the reptile lounge network is slow growth of making sure that like, people have the same mission that we do, which is basically it's, it's bringing together a community of like-minded people who enjoy a species that want to learn and listen to people. And, um, and, uh, it, it's, it's something that we're not like in a rush to, to really gather a bunch of other people on, but I, I would like, you know, ideally, I think it would be cool if we could have four or five episodes a week going um of of different podcasts um so you know and and i, I don't care if they do weekly or every two I, I guess i wouldn't like a once a month or once every two months I would, like that's not a podcast it's like a when i'm bored let me talk um but yeah i mean if, if we could try to get like three or four episodes a week on different species or different reptile related um niches that that would be my goal um you know i i work full-time i'm not quitting my full-time job and i breed what feels like full-time um so i'm not trying to and, and nathan works fucking seven days a week sorry uh -oh. luke's mom um yeah i'll get into that <laughs> yeah so you know i think that like want to keep it because ultimately Nathan and I are the ones that have the, the, the YouTube access. So we're going to be the ones responsible. And I told Nathan off the bat, I said, I'll, I'll take the brunt of the work. Um, and it, well, I mean, depending what it is, right. Right. Like as, as far as like, just like other people coming in and like uploading episodes and doing that. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it just, it, it's going to be slow growing and, and really just like, if we could have four different podcasts that like are just good, quality podcast like again most of the retic industry thinks that like nathan and i are jits we shouldn't be doing a retic you know uh uh podcast but i'm sorry like being objective we're putting good retic information out there um and so they can suck my balls sorry looks um, uh, that 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 and uh <laughs> sorry I, I just think like any anyone who has a genuine love for a species is and and keeps them has right. all the right in the world to to talk about it publicly yeah just whilst you're on that like i think okay. retakes are very much uh you uh, quite a 
abrasive community say and yes. they they want your qualifications and so i think i think the retic lounge has got to the point where people are like yeah okay they know what they're know what they're talking about but i know so many people who doubt just people who give out good information but because they haven't heard the name they're right. not really into it yeah right um nathan what what do you uh, yeah, see with the i, I mean I, I feel like I view it the, the same way, just slow growth and kind of continuing the same mission. Um, I think for me, like, and this is something that I saw in your, in your little interview guide is, you know, when is, when is Nathan going to have his tree monitor podcast? And it's something I've talked to a couple people about. Uh, I want to do my own little swing on it where it's not just monitors. It's, it's a little bit more than that. And, mm -hmm. You know, I, I like to I, I like to consume mostly comedy podcasts, so I want to have it like just light, fun, um, maybe something around metal and monitors. Like that, that's kind of always been my goal. There, there's no you, rush for it, though. Can Can you do metals and monitor, but your intro music be jazz? <laughs> like, I just I think that that would be so funny. You already know what my intro music would be, though. Yeah, I do, but I just I didn't think that I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to tie in the comedy. There's one man and one man only that controls the uh, right. The uh... wait, wait, did you ever switch your music? By the way, we did, but not to Bill Murray. Oh but well, we, we so, can at okay. least monetize the episodes because yeah, we're not getting flagged no, for copyright. Subpar then, <laughs> but yeah, uh, no, it'll probably be a Bill Murray song to do that. But that I, I need to get the podcast running first. But beyond that, like Lucas was saying, you know, I'm working seven days a week between the the reptiles and uh hair so i'm i'm working at a salon what teaching... <laughs> sorry i'm on a roll tonight. this hair on my face um no i'm i'm working at a salon and then teaching at a school at night what the hell was that probably a snake slamming the glass thinking that it was food when no that was a big slam one second <laughs> Like that was concerning. Anyways, <laughs> sorry. Um, retics. Oh, you want to know what I bet it was? I guarantee you that mail that you have in the focus cube enclosure with the sky hide. I bet that sky hide fell. No, that's no? never happened, oh, dude. I, that's happened that's, to me once, and it was loud. That's never happened to me. I'll have to investigate later. But yeah, Nathan, something. Luke's getting impatient with us. Look at his face. Oh well, yeah. The <laughs> the monitor show is coming, but. <laughs> I, I totally lost my train of thought with what happened behind me. I'm sorry. Well, we'll go to the next question then. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, yeah, no, I see. I see a monitor podcast somewhere far in the future once I can free up some free I'm, time I'm, between the school and salon. I'm gonna add. I really look forward to the day on the Reptile Lounge Network where I can listen to an episode on our network. Chuck doesn't know this, but I'm actually contemplating on like after six, eight months of the Condor Lounge, is finding him another co host and them continuing it. That is the worst way to find out. We'll we'll see. Um, but no, I mean that's that's kind of a joke. But now that I'm doing two podcasts, even though the other one's only every other week, um recording it's, one is is yeah, it's a, a lot, job man. in its own. I hate myself. Yeah, so <laughs> uh whilst we're on nathan so you're pretty good you 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 run a tight ship in your your reptile room what what will make you break that streak what what is some animal other than a blue tree monitor that everyone knows you love well is there anything no it's out there? probably not it's probably not going to be blues to start just Lucas, cordensis? no not cordensis either i just say, I, have, I, I have a guess on like what would be a snake that would break his ritual of not getting more snakes oh, oh if we want to just talk snakes of like what no, species no, no, no. i would bring in no so i'm i'm luke is asking in general right like what reptile would it <clears> be <throat> that you would break other than tree monitors but in my mind if it was a snake i feel like I've, i know I've what talked it is. about it before so I, I want to hear your guess, and then I'll go. I was going to say indigo or dry mark on. Yeah, yeah, probably. <clears throat> just just in the fact that I'm a breeder, and like, if there's something that needs to be fed off for you know deformities or whatever, like, it's just the easy garbage option. Garbage disposal. Yeah. 
and the the prettiest damn garbage disposal that you can get in North America. Right. Um beyond that, like I've always had some weird fascination with vine snakes. Colubrids. Yeah. So if if there were anything outside of just what I've talked about, vine snakes and then ooh. <clears throat> Oh, you're going to, uh, yeah, you're going to kind of hate me for this, but I think, I think Bill has kind of swung me towards, uh, the chondros a little bit. I feel like chondros for, for Luke, he can stomach chondros more than he can Morelia more than <laughs> the carpets. Morelia. Or, well, I don't want to say Morelia cause, car, uh, cause chondros are, but, but yeah, as far as the, it's the carpets that he he uh speaks yeah i i have uh, luke just rest assured there is no plans for carpets in my future hold on Uh, luke let me ask you this have you seen a chondro in person like have you held like have you held have you seen a collection of a beautiful chondro room i haven't been anyone i haven't been to a chondro person's reptile room though okay but i have seen like loads you need to go see uh uh Cosmic Chondros over in UK. Cosmic Chondros. Yeah, you, your jaw would drop. But oh no, not Cosmic. That's Steven. Um, I'm drawing a freaking blank. It's who Bill's with right now. Anyways, sorry, Nathan. That makes me happy. Uh, yeah. I mean, just they're they're easy to keep, uh, relatively. And then just size requirements. You know, you get an amazing snake in such a small package. Uh, it's, it's just kind of hard to beat. They're living work of art. I'm not going to get as passionate about Luke as even just as even, Lucas even is, just but... even just the green ones. It, no, I'd want something a... designer and special. Like I'm, I'm not just if yeah. I'm breaking my streak here, Lucas. Like yeah. this, this is my question. Stop buttoning. in. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just you got me, dude. You got me excited when you said chondros in my mind. I was like, Did we just become best friends? I got excited. Uh, I'm not even gonna carry on with that question because otherwise, we'll be here all day with Lucas talking. No, no, about no hold on, it. hold on. What, what about the reverse question of if there was one species that would close my collection off and get rid of everything but that species, what would it be? Me. No, like that. That's the reverse question for oh. me. Go oh. on. I, it's I, it's I, a very easy answer. I don't know. Next question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. All right. Well, everyone, sorry for that waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Uh, right now, like every new species I'm getting is it's. I I I love them for the way they look. I love their natural history. And if I do have a passion and love them, I will continue with them. If I if I don't, I will find them amazing homes. But I'm, I'm in my I'm in my experiment. It's like the seventies and eighties here at my my garage right now. We're we're experimenting. <laughs> um, so I guess like the biggest thing that holds back everyone going to a you know a huge Lucas size collection is it's you know, not we that big. We all don't. We don't all have helpers. So, how do you guys like deal with having your collection? So, like, how does it? How long does it take you? What's your What's your routine? Have you found any ways to, you know, make your your daily or whenever cleaning routines quicker? Like, how does it work? I'm gonna go through mine just because I feel like I can probably go through it the quickest just with my my schedule um so sundays are cleaning days like dedicated cleaning days everything gets a deep clean here um and then feeding days are scattered throughout the week like at the end of my nights. so if i know i'm feeding big stuff between the salon and school i'm thawing out animals and then feeding late at night making sure everyone eats and then going to bed after um but <clears throat> yeah, Sundays are cleaning day, so I have one dedicated day just to the animals, unfortunately. Uh, little stuff, like all the grow-ups, they get checked on every single day, um, just making sure that there's, you know, they have access to fresh water. They didn't, they're not sitting in their tubs too gross, but yeah. Right. 
Um, for me, I just did a recent switch with getting uh, like the the hatchling and for sale rack. I just switched them back over to paper. Um, I had another incident of rupty chip impaction, and I'm just I'm I'm done with it. I'm not. You know what uh, I've never had a problem with? What impaction? Yeah, I wonder why paper. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so so those are getting checked daily now. Um, everything on paper always gets checked daily because I just don't like the smell of retic piss um, sitting on paper when oh, you open up the I tub and it. you smell it. Uh, so they're getting checked daily. Um, but yeah, I am fortunate enough that I have helpers and they they are getting paid. Um, as a matter of fact, last year when Sean was by himself before we got James, I was doing my taxes and I I he gets paid on a it's a commission base. It's based off of sales that I I, I pay out, but um. Sean was actually averaging twelve dollars and like thirty nine cents an hour as a fifteen year old working with snakes. Um, you know, obviously, I wish I could do more because they're they're both amazing. But um, they come over roughly two to three times a week. So right now the schedule is they come Monday. We just switched it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and so on that rotation, um, out of those three days are coming over. I, I'm in there two days with them helping out as well. One day that they're over, um, I have my daughter uh, on Mondays. My wife's working until 9 p.m. So I have my daughter. They're in there. I go in for some of the bigger animals just to support if needed. Um, but even, you know, there there's days where they're unable to come over. And so uh, every single day I am in my garage. Um, I'm a believer that if you're going to breed and have three, four clutches a year, you need to be in there, eyes on, observing changes, differences, and um, you know if there is a a spot clean that needs to be done, um, you know it it will generally happen. And water changes are happening about three days a week for the entire collection. Um, some of them maybe two days a week. But- yeah, the the one thing I never never like stop on like the, the the sunday cleanings like if a retic floods their entire cage with pee like not happening it's it's, it's you gotta clean yeah, yeah exactly um, i don't care if i'm up until two in the morning or you know i'm having to be up at four in the morning to deal with it but yeah same thing um, I, I would say that my collection now is still at a manageable size if they if they stop coming over um really what they help me with is like it it eliminates my it eliminates my late nights. I'm not in the garage at one in the morning anymore cleaning. So that that's what their support has really, really helped me with. I have a follow-up cl- question. If you weren't to have the helpers that you have, how much, just percentage-wise, do you think you would have to cut down your collection? Um, I haven't grown that much since they started. Um, when, when Sean started about a year and a half ago with retics and everything, I mean, it's, it's <clears> really retics that are the, 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 they're the culprit of time. Yep. Um, as far as like time consumption, it's retics. So I don't know. I'd probably downsize about, um, I don't know, really just probably, and it's already the downsizing that I'm doing with moving out some of the morphs and some of the things that I've already produced clutches of, uh, but I don't know, probably like you know, five adult retics. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, I'm not sure if this <laughs> is a good segue into my next question, but if you had to like start again from scratch, no mm. equipment, no animals, what would you change? Would you avoid, you know, get buying into certain projects, dealing with certain people or, like one piece of equipment, like a, some equipment that has just changed everything, made it so much easier. Um, I think there's only one animal in my collection that I don't necessarily need genetically. Um, it's my annery female, but. Then again, like she was my second retic ever. She was, she's who I have tattooed on my arm. Um, so you can get like rid of my her. most. You got her she's on your my arm. most. Well, no, she's my most beautiful animal in like my opinion. But the same breedings I can do with her, I've already done with my purple albino. So does she necessarily need to be in my 
breeding program? Probably not. Um, would I change it? I, I don't think so. Um, those two animals are the reason that I got any more retics. I cared about jumping into the projects that I've jumped into. Um, if I were to do anything differently, I would, I would have relied on myself more in the beginning. I had a little bit of help with my partner uh, when I first got into it. So I would have relied more on myself to fuel the passion. I like that. I mean, especially when it comes to like, you know, the potential of growth and everything, you know, relying yeah. on yourself can greatly determine, you know, the direction that you had. Um, I guess for me, uh, I would have started keeping ambient right off the bat. Most of my headaches of keeping retics in my early years were thermostats beeping, um, pushing. We just need to get past the partho king phase. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. Maybe. I don't know. I don't even, whatever. Um, yeah, it was definitely the, I, I would go ambient off the bat. Uh, since I switched to ambient, um, I don't, I don't, I, it's finally after doing it for two years, I'm the, the phantom beep, right? Like the, the thermostat beeping that now doesn't exist is finally not happening as much in my ear. Um, you go to Phil's house. Yeah. Until you go to Phil's house and you literally have to sleep with that beeping on. Um, and, uh, yeah. And I just, I, I again, the, the change in my read, what was cool is I had retakes for, for two and a half years that, you know, before I switched them, maybe even three years. Yeah. Before I switched them to ambient and the, the behavioral change that I saw and just, uh, their digestion and how much more they move around. And I just, I like it in general for them. I, I really do. Um, so that's one thing that I would change. Uh, next thing that I would change is, um, uh, I, I just, I wish I didn't have the mindset early on about like going into this with wanting to be like a, a breeder. Um, and, uh, I got, I, you know, there's a reason why, like it's taken me a while, but to realize that like locality is my jam and that's really what I like, you know, I produce a clutch that's a morph clutch and, you know, I produce a locality clutch, you know, in that same month and, and I'm opening up the locality tubs you know, the, the racks for those babies 10 times more than I am the Morse. Right. But I got into that mindset of like, Oh, if I'm going to be a breeder, I need to, I need to have this morph. I need to work with this project. I need to, you know, or else I'm going to be nothing. Right. And you, it's very easy to fall into that mindset of that. That's the blessing and curse of social media. It's free marketing. Right. And you, it, you network and social, but the, the curse of it is you, that, that envy, right. That, that, you know, well, if I don't have this or I don't have that, um, at least for me, that was like the curse for me. Um, and, uh, I'm not sure, like, I, I, I want to naturally say I would have grown a little bit slower, but I'm not sure if I like regret that. Um, uh, because I, I love my collection. I love the, the size of it. I love the animals that I have again in my garage right now with the retakes that I'm not selling. Um, you know, 90% of them are F1 or wild caught uh localities right and and that that i'm really proud of that i think i have the best and most diverse locality collection in the state of texas um and that that to me is something i'm really proud of so i don't know if i would have changed the rate that i grew but maybe just not jump into the more stuff and and uh and and not passing on some of the rare locale like i, I passed on Bali's, i passed on malaysians um and those are animals that like now I'm begging for them to come back up, and I can't find. Uh, yeah, I think it, that, that makes a lot of sense for you because you've definitely seemed to have found your your what you love. Yeah, and I think you've really no you really noticed that if you know, like with your evolution, because we us viewers get a very unique look on how your your guys' mindset has changed. And you know, realizing that there is space in in the community for someone who is just locales, like right? mm -hmm. who just loves their localities and just can talk your ears off about them. And I think probably when the Retic Lounge started, like that wasn't too heard of. It really wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wish I could remember like exactly the time I saw that shift happen, but. 
it, it it's been cool to see that in retakes recently that people are just caring about them a little bit more yeah it's it's definitely grown and um and uh it's grown and it's exciting. I get people that reach out to me and they, they, you know, they'll, they'll ask to talk on the phone and I talk to them and they, uh, they talk about just like, like I, I hear the echoing of like my, my mindset of like, like why they like the idea of keeping localities and everything. And, and that didn't happen when I was producing my first or second clutch back in 2021. Um, so it's, it's been cool to see the, the evolution and, um, and hopefully people continue to go and make them just more readily available. I'm not a, I'm not a gatekeeper. I'm not over mm -hmm. here to say, I want to do localities because we can't import them because you can sell them for 1500 or $2,000 easy. Um, I'd be okay with selling them for 500 if that's what the market value was, if it meant just more people wanting to work on preserving them. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's definitely something that's quite overlooked. It's like it would be so amazing if someone like if everyone who who bred semi regularly decided to breed a locality like decided right. that's that's the one I love. Right, like just the one. The situation right? would be so different, and I don't think they would struggle. Right. Yeah. So I guess whilst uh, <laughs> I think a good segue is uh, what is what is your dream locality morph combo? Ooh. What do you think is a is a morph that could really do with being enhanced by a certain locality. So I know, Lucas, I know what you're going to say because you've said it before. Hold on. Albino Halma that, Harris. That, that, wait, you said Albino Halma Harris? Yeah. Perfect. Close. Oh, Close. okay. Close. Um, I, I am so excited. I'm going to be working this in probably in the next year and a half. Um, I think there's people that are capable of doing it now. Um, but I don't know why um, I want to like, I'm not talking about the fake Annery bullshit that's out there. I want to see a legit, true Annery Halmahera. Like I want to see that the red and orange that's in the Halmahera stripped away. And I want to see a freaking dark black and silver retic. <laughs> that's a good answer. Nathan, do you but have one? Albinos are cool, though. I, locality <laughs> is not my game. Uh, you know, Anari Sumatran would be really cool for me. Just see what those silvers would do to each other. Um, but yeah, beyond that, not really. I think, I think in the States, you're actually quite... Uh, I, I think Garrett has done very well with like the Phantom Tombalong. He Did he make those? Yeah, yeah, yeah 50%. Phantom. Yeah, they was, were very cool. I had one for a year and a half, and he was he was all his name was uh Tom, um, cool dude, Tom DeLongan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that and that, his name I got, I got him from someone who bought it from from Garrett, and his name was already Tom, so I kept it. And uh, it, I, my first thing when he told me to to keep his name, I was like, you know, it's Tam, right? It's Tam DeLongan, and he's like, what do you mean? <laughs> And no, I, I'm pretty that, sure I that crush locality his world. name. That locality name has always made me think Blink 182 every time I hear right. it. Right, right. <laughs> so Tom's the perfect. perfect so I think that snake. I think the next question will be the opposite. What do you? But kind of. What do you think of the world's first craze? Everyone wanting to label. Oh, this is a world's first clutch. I've got the world's first albino, anery, anthrax, genetic stripe, orange ghost stripe, whatever. How do you feel about seeing those? I just, it doesn't excite me. Uh, really, just because it, it's more of a marketing thing than it is like anything else. Um, there's still a reticulated python in the end of the day. A cow reticulated python still a reticulated python. Um, yeah, I, I just think it kind of it kind of kills the passion in in the whole breeding game to me. Like, I want to breed stuff because I'm absolutely in love with it, not to race someone towards the first next visual thing. Like, I don't know. I think I'd rather refine than than try to be the the person pushing something new. Right. 
Um, I really like that statement. Um, I like people that focus and refine. Um, the moment that I saw someone claim a world's first on Hets, I was like, all right, we're done with this shit. Like, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? A world's first Het? Congrats, dude. Like, um, but so I, on the surface level, not a fan. However, I can appreciate what it did for the retic industry. Um, if you look at different morph combos, some of them are absolutely spectacular and they're phenomenal. And maybe if it wasn't for the world's first chase that people were just dying to do, maybe we wouldn't have seen as quickly some of these things pop up. Right. Um, but I have a couple issues with the world's first, um, is it sends a message to the people who want to get into like just hobby breeding. It sends a message that like, if you aren't, if you don't have everything in your collection that, that, you know, then you're getting behind. And so what that does is that, it, you know, it encourages people to get more retics. Um, and then the world's first craze also, um, you know, it, 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 it it's, it's a race to make, an animal and one in 64 odds in a clutch of 50 snakes. And it creates a massive overproduction of animals that should not even be produced a little, right? Like they should. So it, it's created a problem for the market itself. So it's kind of funny to watch people complain about the, the, the reticulated Python market. And at the same time, you're creating, you know, triple pos heads. Then it's like, cool. Like, um, so, you know, but I, I can appreciate it because I've seen people make worlds first that are beautiful and, uh, it, it's, it's just, it, it, there's no winning with like continuing this world's first craze. Unfortunately, I feel like the, I'm seeing it less and less. The only time it impresses me is when it's put into something smaller because then it's more obtainable for me. <laughs> right. Well, that, that's, that's, that's now. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's a. That's an that's the new thing happening, right? So like we have the, the it's all about the world's first and it's mainlands. Now it's about like the world's first superdorf version of a eighteen that, that morph same world's animal. first, but also now shrunk down. Yeah, right. So again, I think it's going to impact the market in a negative way because it, it just it it brings an influx of animals being produced for an animal that shouldn't be produced a lot of because they're retics. That's why I'm not racing to be the first one to do high percentage cows i'll let i'll let andrew and i'll let eric and all those other <clears throat> big breeders help me along the way like i don't have a problem with you know the people that have been established longer than me be able to lead the way in some of those areas like right no i i agree um so yeah that that's my thoughts on the the world's first craze it's silly um you know i can appreciate some aspects of it uh yeah. but i think it's had more harm than it has good I think it ball pythonifies like retics and retics really should not be treated like ball right. Is anyone can own a ball python. I firmly believe that. Right. Not yeah. anyone can own a retic of any size. Right. Like I don't retics. care how small it is, it's not meant for everyone. Right. Like retics are like Pokemon cards. You can collect them as many as you want and you can trade them off and you can sell them and you can do what you want. Retics is like having a VR and you play it for the first time and you end up whacking your TV like that. That's what like retakes are <laughs> uh, like. It's just, you don't, I don't know. I, that was a dumb comparison, but like one is very more advanced and should not be kept by everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, well, it's a big issue here in the UK. So I understand saying world's first. And if it's something that I can't believe it turned out to look like that, like, for example, some of the Ocelot world firsts, like who I would have never imagined the Tiger Ocelot or Phantom Ocelot would look like that. I understand saying this is the world's first look. This is something special. But if it's something where it's been done before, but you're just adding Tiger to it and we all know what exactly what it's going to look like, then I just think, yeah, you're just trying to. You're just trying to ball pythonize the retics and it's right. a big it's a big problem here in the uk because we even have people saying uk's first okay. and yeah not even 
we've got also people saying one of two in the UK or one of three in the UK. And it's like, Nathan, could you imagine if online I was like Texas first, like that, that's the equivalent of UK first, (laughs) same size. Uh, (laughs) Man. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, it doesn't shock me, unfortunately, that right. you guys have that. I, I'm, su- I'm, I guess, I'm more surprised that we don't have a, a U.S. first. Right. Uh, I mean, I've seen some people. I mean, I definitely have seen some people. You know, do that. Um, you know, I think that. Uh, I don't know. I feel like if your world's first is a flat yellow orange retic, and it's no different than the other world's first, that's one gene off of yours that is still a flat yellow orange retake it's you didn't do anything um but you know you added that mutation so good job yeah i also think it sort of gamifies the whole breeding aspect in the fact of how can i make this combo that i don't think has ever been done before when in fact you should be thinking how can i make this combo that would look awesome the best it can possibly be i think it just sort of meet it promotes lazy breeding as well dude yeah that's that's i i wanted like just louder for the people in the back um, uh, and that that's why we have to have people like shane costello and people that are really focused that are refining right yeah yeah we that's why people like those breeders are just so important um yeah i will take a refine selectively bred phenomenal example of a tiger over a tiger platinum motley uh you could tell i don't do the morph thing much but you know what i mean even just purples like some the super dwarf purples like they don't age super well like a lot of them end up super lavender and like it's hard to find a great example of purple in super dwarf. So it, it's right. like, it takes people that care about showing those good examples. Like I, I produced a similar clutch to someone else and our animals looked completely different. Right. Can someone please take a 75% super dwarf purple to a home Hera? Jeez. <laughs> Can you guys please uh, just like uh, add some eggs of home Hera male? Not big. Not big. Um, I think the wild take top... A, take, take a picture of you with one outside of its enclosure, and maybe we'll talk about it. I mean, mine's only two years old, but even at two years old, it's in the palm of my hand. It's six well, foot. if I only have them for a few months, that doesn't matter, right? Oh, it's, oh, dude, that's a pairing. Okay, I like this. <laughs> that's a pairing. You're smart. That's I didn't even... That like went right over my head. Someone has a 75% super dwarf. Huh. Yeah, purple. Um, okay, I like that's that. something that I would love to do eventually as well. Like Halmer Harris, they are one mm-hmm. of my dream localities. Unfortunately, I just cannot find one. <laughs> you, Murray Max doesn't have him anymore. Uh, you can't contact Murray Mac anymore. He's disappeared. <laughs> Actually, that's a funny thing you say that I reached out to him a couple months ago and didn't get a message. Yeah, yeah, I've been trying because every once in a while, I'll, I'll there'll be a new locality that I'm trying to track down in the UK and sort of you know figure out how we're doing with them, and I'll see that he bred it. So like Tom Along, I've I don't I've only seen him breed them. He was and my U- really- he was my UK locality guy. He was the guy I talked to for everything locality over in the UK. Yeah, and he's had so many stuff that he bred, and I really want them but unfortunately he was he bred it just before my time or just before i had that kind of money to put on a on a retic so he um yeah it's a big (laughs) the uk retic community really lost like a big um person for localities when murray mac just disappeared man that sucks well he he disappeared he's not he's not gone so Mm -hmm. there's There's always somewhere yeah, hopefully he resurfaces. I hope every day. <laughs> <laughs> For real. I know. Honestly, I know someone who um, sometimes contacts him. So every once in a while, I'll be like, is he, is he back yet? Is he, <laughs> is he back yet? Has he messaged you? <laughs> um, Man. 
I'm not sure if I have any good segues, but <laughs> so I guess we'll just go on to. We uh, don't usually running. either, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess this, this will also be a very interesting, um, especially for Lucas, is how do you introduce your snakes to people with little to no experience mm. with them? Is there anything you won't let them do or you're extra careful about? And I'm also sort mm. of for you specifically is about how did you introduce your helpers because I assume they had very or none retic experience, and that's kind of because you're their boss, and that's a different sort of relationship. Yeah, um, Nathan, I actually kind of want you to go first because you've done some outreach stuff, and I love when you you talk about this. And then I'll I'll go into the experience with my my helpers, and then even like some family members and friends and stuff. For me, it's very animal specific. Like we all know retics, and it. it at this point like if you if you've worked with them an individual for you know a year or two you pretty much can start figuring out their personality uh how much they're willing to tolerate in terms of handling um so there's very specific animals that i'll take out to uh like we have a local show here that sometimes i'll just go and i, I just sit with our local reptile and invertebrates uh facebook forum group uh they have a table set up there and i'll maybe bring out a cage and an animal uh but i want it to be something large enough that's going to draw people in and then something that's also able to be handled by other people um so as far as like outreach goes that's that's like my first consideration and that with retics also can change day by day um my annery girl, she's kind of moody, but you can catch her on a really good day where she's a good, you know, ambassador animal that you can take around people that have never been around snakes. Um, <clears throat> I think Lucas, in terms of like habituating people to the actual behaviors and, you know, actually working with these animals is going to be able to answer this a little bit better, but you know, I have people that come over just hearing that I have snakes hidden away in my apartment all the time. Uh, I have friends that come over for weekly bike rides. You know, I'm, I'm single, so I'm dating. And <laughs> the, the most recent girl, she came over last week and she kn knew nothing about the snakes. It's kind of something I hide and I uh, brought her in. And, you know, it's it if it's something like that, where I know this person has no reptile experience. Uh, it, it's it's hands-on, but they're not working with the animal. They're not getting the animal out of the enclosure. They're very much watching me and how I interact with the animals and then telling them, you know, what they can and cannot do, what they should be comfortable with around this animal. Yeah, I... I um... So, um, okay, hold on. I'm going to scroll up and, okay, there's the question. Okay. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so let's start off with like, you know, when family members or people that, that come over, right. And they're, they're the people that are like, oh yeah, when I grew up, I had an eight foot ball Python and I'm like, okay, so let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's start let's with show this. show you what eight feet really looks let's, like. Yeah. No, so I'm like, let's start with this like two year old Kalatoa that's like, five and a half feet, right? And it just a little noodle skinny. And, um, you know, so anybody who's in my garage, um, you know, unless I give them the green light, you're, you're not opening up a tub. You're not opening up an enclosure. You're not like, don't, um, and, and what's funny is that, um, you know, they're like, Oh, it can't be that bad. And then what I'll do is I'll go to my, my turn eight female who has an amazing food response and I'll open up the enclosure. I'll let them see her reaction. I'm like, this is why you don't. And then I tap her and I take her out and I'm handling her and they're like, Oh, um, so yeah, I mean, family members, it's just like what they're comfortable with. Right. So like, I, I've never been that guy that like, who's had people come over and I don't like to force people to like people I, for, I, for some reason. I mean, not for some reason, for, for reasons, I don't know, I guess I can't explain, but people have a genuine, a genuine fear of snakes, uh, being a therapist and treating phobias and things like that. Like people do have a true fear. So the last thing that I want to do is 
try to be the funny guy and like make their nightmare come to life and then they'll never want to touch a snake right so I don't know. I, I, you know, whatever they're comfortable with. So really what I do is I will handle it around them. And usually what ends up happening is, is they get curious and, you know, I say like, do you want to touch it? And I'll keep the head away and let them touch the back of it. And then, mm-hmm. you know, do you want to stick your hands out and kind of let it go through? And, and eventually they start to, to hold it. Um, when it comes to my helpers, um, you know, when I look back and like how I talked to them and, and how I, I worked with them when they first came over, um, they both have had experience with snakes, but not like not retakes. Right. And it was both something that they both really, really, really wanted to. Um, and so it's all like, it's, it's, um, you know, fortunately for me, I only have one snake in my garage. Um, that's like off limits for like, just having a good time handling. Um, because, uh, she's really bit. She's my Slayer female, um, older girl, heavy bodied. And, uh, I knew I heard a cat meowing. Um, I couldn't get him to shut up. So that, that's okay. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad he's here. Um, what's up puss? Um, so yeah, so that's the only, every other snake after that, it's about observing. Um, and you know, I think back and I'm like, man, was I being too annoying? But, uh, like, because what I do is I literally am like, you know, I want you to look at the snake like I, we're in front of it with a hook. I'm like, pay attention to the snake's body language. Like, what's it doing? Sometimes it's coiling up right at the glass, right? So, like, just getting them to understand their their body language and then opening up the enclosure, the tap, um, and instructing them on when it's safe to kind of just, like, pull them out. And it's all observational at first. And then where they come in, like, as as helpers at the beginning is I'm, I'm – I'm showing them the behavior aspect and then I take the snake out. They help me with, if I need to get the lid on, um, you know, some of these snakes that are a little bit bigger, they, it's not easy getting them in a holding tub. Um, so they'll help with that aspect. And then, then they, they help with the cleaning part. Um, and then pretty much like for all of them on, on like, you know, within that first week, day two, day three, any snake that I have, um, I don't have large snakes shoved in racks. So any snake that I have that's in a rack, they understand what the hook is. They under they they've seen me, you know, because again, on on a two hour cleaning period in my garage, we're probably going through at least twenty retics, um, whether they're they're babies I'm selling or adults, and they're they're seeing me use the hook right and how to turn off that food response. And so, anything in Iraq, if you feel comfortable and you want to give it a try, go. Um, fortunately for me, Sean, when he started at the age of fourteen. Uh, and, and James is in his mid twenties. They just both are naturals. They caught on real quick. Um, and now even Sean, he's 16 now. Um, he can take out any snake. Um, you know, he, he can take out any snake he feels comfortable. And again, the only snake that I, I tell them, like, you're not taking out unless I'm there is the Slayer girl. Um, and that's just because sometimes there's no shutting off her food response. And because she's so big, if she decides to come halfway out the enclosure, she's not going back in. Right. Unless like you're, it's, it's a pretty fun situation sometimes. Um, and so, uh, and, and they've now learned what females do when it's like time for them to get on to, uh, cycling, like females that are proven breeders here in my garage, there's a time of the year that like they know like okay i can't just handle and have fun with her because she might just randomly wrap me with a food response and so there's like they they've picked up on they're they're, they've done a phenomenal job but that that's essentially what i do is i i really just hone in and talk a lot on paying attention to body language because if you can understand their psychology and you can understand their next move you can keep yourself safe all the time yeah I tend to agree with that. Yeah, pretty good answer. <laughs> um, sorry, are you going to say something? Yeah, I mean, I just did. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm, I'm really impressed with James and, and I mean, to have a 14 year old, 15, and a 16 year old, and watch him take out a wild caught 10 foot Kalatoa is. I'm just sitting there and I'm like, damn, I wish I was that kid at 16 being able to do that, man. That's so badass. 
um, I probably would have been a little more nervous than he is at 16. Yeah, for sure. That's 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 pretty impressive. Even yeah. like even now, and I've got quite a bit of experience. I it's a bit of a nervous thing, especially a snake that like I don't know. I get oh, I get man. pretty nervous around snakes that I've I've never like interacted with or seen someone interact with. So, like for example, I, I went and saw a friend's collection recently, and he just brings it out, puts it around, and obviously I trust him, and that it's going to be a you know a happy snake. But it's still like you're watching its head a little bit. Just what's oh, what's, dude, yeah. I don't tr- I don't trust anybody's snake. They can say it's a puppy, and I'm still like, let uh, me give it I, some trust. Like I don't trust a hatchling I haven't seen in a couple of years. That, right <laughs> that rocked over it the... yeah over at phil's house i mean yeah i i trust your your relationship with it but we're we're late at night trying to record and he's like yeah just pull her out no hook needed and i reach in and get bit like <laughs> yeah I, i'm gonna i'm gonna probably stick to my routine from here on out <laughs> yeah I'm, 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 I'm gonna not trust that snake until i know from its body language i can trust that snake <laughs> Me and Nathan have been pretty transparent. We don't like getting bit. Um, I and um, I, I avoid it at all costs. And, you know, some people are the opposite. They're like, oh, they'll put their hand in front of a snake and get I bit. I did and... love watching you get bit, though, just because everyone knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. It um, was such a spectacle, too, because it was just it was a, a party over at Bill's house before a, an NARBC show. But I was I was hoping I was going to pull it off without getting bit and people are going to be like, damn, but nope, got bit. Um, <laughs> so um, but yeah, like I don't I don't, you know, other snakes in people's collections like it. it's, you know, I, it's just something that, you know, and, and that's again, thankful for James. Um, oh, he came back. Oh, there he is. Um, yeah, I'm I'm thankful for James because uh, James is the dude in the garage that doesn't give a shit to be bit. <laughs> so we're doing photography day with hatchlings that want to nip and bite, and James is the one pulling them out of the tubs. And <laughs> I'm like, thanks, dude. Um, so, but yeah, I think it's. Uh, I don't know. What I was gonna say, <laughs> my mind went blank when uh, <laughs> when it messed up. Um, Oh, I think I make I make uh, I'm a bit more risky when it comes to <laughs> what I do. I think you guys have seen me on um, <laughs> the, the Zoom calls. Yeah, I've I've done cuddling some- with the hissing African rock that just hated being handled at any cost. Like, yeah, yeah, we are all waiting good. for it. That was a Luke's, bit too close to <laughs> Luke's handling a snake that's doing this, and he's like, "I'm all right, guys." I've only ever I've only been bitten twice by retics. So and those Afrox never bit me. Even though they tried. I mean, I probably I've I've and again, keeping hatchlings all the like in in the ones that I've sold, what I have, I've probably gone through over 200 retics uh between breeding, selling and keeping and you know and, and what I do and um I I've been bit probably five times um it's a number i'm proud of but also indicates i do whatever i can to get avoid being bit (laughs) yeah i don't like whilst talking about those afrox they were evil when they came in and i think it's because they just never really saw people they were in a rack in someone's reptile room uh i don't think they went to too many times they didn't they weren't heavily fed they were quite conservatively fed so they weren't seeing people that often and then so when i had them in my bedroom and they could see me eating my dinner going to sleep they could see me all the time they tamed down really quickly like right at the start they were evil but i was pretty happy with them towards the end i'm I'm, i wonder if that sort of came across on on video (laughs) i don't think it did no no it certainly didn't (laughs) No. Yeah. So when, whenever I end up breeding or, you know, my collection starts to really increase, I think that's one thing that I'm going to really try and do is make sure that my snakes see me whenever I like when I, in my reptile room, which I'm making, that they can see me from uh, any racks or enclosures that they have. Cause that really helped them. 
Dude, I you know, we did the experiment with my Halmahera and moving it from a rack over into a, a focus cube with UV lighting and, you know, the phase system that we did to introduce different uh, variables. But um, that snake was very nervous, very defensive, so nervous that when you held it, it would wrap your hand and freeze, right? And you would spend 20 minutes trying to get it back in without forcing a negative interaction on it and it biting and getting scared. Um And within the first like two weeks of just putting it in an enclosure with a glass, like a a door that it can fully see you, behavior dramatically shifted and that defensiveness went away. Yeah, I've really seen it change. Um, So, but do you do you like all of your animals like being quite tame? Do you want them all to be tame, or do you like having that little spicy snake in your collection that is a bit of keeps you on your toes? I don't know if like is necessarily the right word for it. I I think it's for me almost a necessity just to remind myself. Um, I I don't think I have anything all that spicy. I'd say more moody, but like there's just stuff I'm more careful with. And I'm, I'm appreciative of that because I don't get too complacent with the stuff that's not. Right. Moody's a good word, like my Slayer, right? She's not spicy, but she has her days. And uh, it is fun, right? Because at the end of the day, like once you get her, like I know that like, you know, the moment that I see her trying to get back on her shelf, I'm safe and I'm good. You start to learn like when she's out of it and it kind of, yeah, it brings up the adrenaline a little, but um, I don't, I don't like assholes. Like I don't like not my thing. One thing that I will say is really cool is keeping these pimboras, um, you know, these Sri Lankan pythons, um, is it's really cool to handle a snake that is just growling and, and hissing, but like their body language and they're moving and they, they're totally cool, but they're also hissing, right? So um, that's a weird but cool experience. Um, but no, my, my two spiciest, and I mean spiciest, is um my aru imported green tree pythons um they hate me and uh and what sucks about them hating me is they're in a position where they're where when i need to put them back in i need to like get i I step up on a, a small stool um and the female has free range when I'm putting her her perch back in, she's got free range at my face, and she's come. I've I've smelt her breath a couple times, um, and I don't <laughs> want to get bit in the face by her. Um, How's her breath smell? Not good. Um, like fear, um, and uh, so I it not fun. Um, I don't I don't like having to take them out. I do everything I can to to clean and work around them and not. Uh, but there are times I gotta take them out and. And every time I do, I'm, I'm, you know, there's, there's a dance, right? Like you, they're on the perch and you gotta, you gotta move around and spin the the perch and you like, just, it's avoiding them from making eye contact with me. And, uh, no, I don't like that. See, I love, I love having Bruce being a little bit spicy because especially with the, uh, super dwarf locales, the wild caught ones, they've all been so nice. They, mm-hmm. they, I, no notable noticeable difference between my animals that have been captive bred for more generations than i count and i think with just dealing with captive bred animals you can become like complicit you don't realize Mm -hmm. you just it's like you're dealing with a big bull python sometimes especially ones that don't have a food food response that like it 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 is just a big bull python sometimes it's more active and I've I found it very easy to sort of when I'm just dealing with those ones to forget exactly what I'm dealing with. And Bruce demands that respect. He brings you back to reality very quickly. And yeah. I really love that about him because it just reminds me what these animals are about and they are the real deal. And I I, I love that. Right. Um my Maluku region animals, they're not spicy, they're sweethearts, but for some reason they have this thing where mid handling they will turn on a food response. So they're, they're my, as far as Rita goes, that's, that's my complacency reminder, right? It's, they're not mean, they're not defensive, but you could be holding them for three, four minutes. And all of a sudden 
within five seconds, your hand is purple and they, they have their mouth pressed up against your hand and they're thinking about biting. They're like, this doesn't seem like food, but maybe it is. <laughs> um, that, that, especially now that, you know, some of them are getting eight, nine feet, not fun. I'll keep that in mind when I, if I get how my hair is one day, <laughs> that would be something very fun to watch. Yeah. I think, I think the, the demeanor of how my hair is, at least here in the U S are a little overhyped. Um, I got two F ones that are some of my biggest sweethearts. Um, I'm not sure if, should I keep going? <laughs> Go for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, like you, you got a long list of questions. I mean, if there are questions on here that you really want to ask, yeah. I mean, you're, I mean, again, it's Nathan and I got time. You're the one who's, who's the sun's about to come up. The sun is already up. <laughs> oh, jeez, dude. I feel terrible. You just can't see it because that taped up uh, Rascal's flag is covering all the sunlight. <laughs> I've got the curtains closed because I didn't want people watching. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll keep going because I think, like, I think some of these questions are kind of good. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, you got to, there are some awesome questions on here. Um, so, yeah, no, well, I guess the next one is, and this sort of ties into, so Nathan, you've done like kids shows. I don't want to, is it, it might not have been kids, but uh, like going. Just, just general reptile shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what responsibilities do you think come with being an active member of the retic community? Like you, you guys are as active as they come. Like having a podcast that you release every week, like I, I'm sh I, I'm, I assume you guys think that there is responsibilities with it. Like you have a responsibility to give knowledge that is factual in as far as you guys know. Is there anything else that you think? Uh, I think there's just careful consideration into, you know, the, the content that we're putting out there. Um, but in terms of me being all that active in the retic community, I, I hardly even post my animals. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really have the time besides just spending time with them to try to set up cameras and, you know, do all the fancy stuff with them. So, you know, when it comes to me working within the community, I think it's just trying to get people to love these animals and not, you know, just not, take part in all the infighting that goes on. Uh, that's always been a big, big thing for me. Like, I just don't want to be involved. I'd rather just love these animals because I love these animals and try to get people to do the same. Can I quickly interject that you are an active member of this community in my no, I, I Oh, absolutely. This podcast is worth a, a, fit, a billion photos. Like yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm most active people. within this podcast, and I think that's where the most like special consideration comes into. Um, yeah, Nathan and know. I actually, like yesterday, we were going back and forth about thinking about like potential guests coming on, and you know, I had reservation, and Nathan talked about it, and, and we kind of, you know, we're, we're going back and forth a little bit about just, you know, the, the, people we have on and the information we put out um but yeah i'm gonna side with luke on this one i think that you are very active you're 100 uh, episodes active <laughs> no i i definitely agree with that but i think i'm active in my own way where i'm focused just on what i'm doing and i i wish i would see more of that um i think people get involved in what's happening too much and as the community as a whole and then not just the animal itself yeah um and uh you know I, I think for me um you know the content that we put out has um you know I, there's not a single episode that that you know i i regret putting out um you know but i but i think like with the information that we put out comes consequences there's good consequences and there's there's you know there's negative consequences right and i can use the tk Kalatoa Superdorf, you know, episode, for example. And, and again, that, that was going based off of, um, all the information that, that I was, that we were able to compile talking to some other people and, and just like looking at the information. And again, with good intent of like, let's really stop and think about what we're doing. Um, 
but many people in the community kind of took it as an attack, right? And so I, I guess, like, again, I feel like there's a responsibility to do those type of things, and how the public is going to react is not my responsibility, right? Like, that's out of my control, and I have to do a better job of not worrying about that, right? Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, and, and as far as like activity on social media, because I'm, I'm very much the opposite of, of like, I'm very involved in social media. I mean, that's how I got my, how people started seeing my name left and right here and there is because I was active on every group when I only had one retic. Um, and as I learned more, I absorbed information. I regurgitated information when newer people than me were coming out and I was trying to support and help them. As I gained more experience, getting more animals, I could provide my own input. Um, so I do think that, um, it's, I don't think everyone needs to do it, but, um, I, I do like facilitating and helping young people and, uh, not young people, helping young retail keepers and, and growing, um, because I see a lot of misinformation out there and, and where I struggle the most is wanting to correct it all. Um, I, I really do. Like I, I want to, and that's, what's gotten me into some Facebook bullshit back and forth. Um, and, uh, so I'm, I'm being a lot more selective on picking my battles, but even when I'm doing a great job and I haven't engaged in any of that crap, um, I get dragged in and tagged on some bullshit. And I'm like, why? Like, I'm like, why are you tempting me to go off right now when, when I've been good? Um, so, and I think the reason why I get tagged is because I, I have a large social media presence. I'm very active on the forums and on the groups. And and I'm going to be honest, 2024 has been amazing. It's been my least active on Facebook groups. Um, and I'm appreciating it. Um, I feel like I don't have to be anymore because I have this. And and I think where I'm commenting the most now is when people have questions, where, where you'll see a lot of my comments come up is I'm posting a link to an episode that we did on the question that they're asking about. And that's, that's, that to me is, um, here, I know you want the quick answer. You want the easy answer, but here's an hour and a half long podcast talking about pushing, listen, learn, and ask me if you have any questions. <laughs> and I think podcasts like this and just giving out information in general no matter like how small if it's just a comment on someone with an issue it's one of the the best ways to give back to a community that you've learned from mm -hmm. and i i think sort of your episodes i reckon they help quite a few especially the earlier ones where you're just talk, going through the basics i think they must really really help people um sorry one second <laughs> <laughs> they must really help people uh, like join the retic community and understand what they're about and they answer mm -hmm. their questions which would normally take mm -hmm. like a hundred facebook posts and that means more to making the community <laughs> a better place than say a, a hundred photos of your projects i guess right so don't underestimate uh, yourself nathan uh, i guess <laughs> well no, well that's the reason we started this podcast i mean Just ultimately back, yeah. is well not only that but we wish we would have had some of this information getting into these animals i mean it's a big responsible a uh, big responsibility owning one of these animals let alone you know 12 to however many lucas has hidden away in his garage <laughs> um it's not that much <laughs> <laughs> um but no for real like there was a lot of growing that i think lucas and i both had to do when we we got our first animals and and learning about their behaviors and learning about their breeding tendencies and what those signals look like you know um what a healthy retic should look like even coming down to you know what to expect when you're receiving your first animal, I think is just information I would have liked to have. So it's cool to hear that those early episodes were, were impactful. And I, I, I do think that they were honestly some of our most impactful episodes, even though we were still figuring, figuring out this whole podcasting thing. Right. You know? Um. And, and, and by the way, like if anyone is listening and you're, you're, 
uh, like if there are husbandry behavioral or any topics that you want us to cover that we maybe haven't like drop it in the comments because it is hard to come up with more stuff like that. But I, I will say this is not even, you know, it, it's related to the question, but, um, the, the, the best compliment that I've ever received came from someone that I look up to the most. Um, Chris McVicker reached out to me and said, I just rewatched your guys' episode on pushing and you guys helped me solve an issue with a pushing retake. And, I, and this is a guy that's been doing this for 15 years that I love and respect and I consider him a best friend in the industry. And when he said that, I was like, okay, maybe we're doing something right, right? Because you always have, Nathan, I don't know if you still struggle with it. I struggle with it every single like episode. It's like imposter syndrome, right? Um, I've been, yeah, I face it here. I face it teaching in, in right. the hair industry. And it's just like, I, it, it haunts I, I know you. enough it's just, it's to there. be able to help someone. Right, exactly. Um, but yeah, so hearing things like that is is huge. Um, so yeah, just as far as like, we, we do need to, you know, again, like the guests that we have on and, you know, now that we have a following, I think it's important that we're, we're representing who we want to like, what, what the, the network is trying to portray. Yeah. I think you do a really good job at that. So what, for someone who is just getting into retakes, what kind of, how would you um, recommend them join the community more, get more involved with people Obviously, your podcasts are a great place to learn, but for the stuff you don't cover or um, communities that are welcoming to newer people, because I understand that Facebook groups can be quite <laughs> daunting and a battlefield at some times. Right. Um, so, uh, shameless plug here. There's a link down below, the Retake Lounge. Um, and, and I say that not because... Uh, you know, we want your, it's five bucks a month. Um, and it's not a lot, but what's beautiful about our community and our discord is it's active. And there's people that have been keeping and doing this longer than me and Nathan. There's people that have been keeping and doing this for a month and there's people joining that don't even have their first retake. Um, and you know, to be honest, I don't, I don't like, no one has ever asked a, a, like, you know, we, have members that like, Hey, dumb question. Right. But again, people are like, no, not dumb. That's a good question. Um, but I guess it's, it's find your community and find the people that seem warming and welcome to you and, and, uh, and kind of let them take you under their umbrella if they're willing to. And, um, I don't know why my gut is telling me to say this because I disagree partly with it, but I think it is very important that people get on to Facebook. Um, and they join the forums because there is so much information out there, even if it means not interacting. But like, if you have a question you don't want to ask, someone will ask that question. You'll be able to read everybody's response and everyone's asshole comment, and you'll save yourself that that feeling by not doing it. But um, go on the Retake Nation, go on the Retake Alliance, go on the U.S. Superdorf and Dorf community page, go on Retake Worldwide, and literally type. Uh, best disinfectant on the search and you'll see a hundred posts with all the information. You don't have to make a single post for you to, to gain a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, for, for sure. Especially on the nation. If you have a question and you just even put it in the search, you'll get answers from that were relevant in 2011, 2014, 2018, 2020, <laughs> everything. It's, it's the best way to, you know, people ask me, how do you know so much about A or how do you know so much about B? And it's like, because I've, I've read probably every post in the retic nation. <laughs> I think that was a big part of, um, just researching for, um, well, especially some of the questions that Glenn was asking me, it was just looking right. up for the nation. When, when were Tom Longman's first imported? Well, there was the post. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you have any ideas? <laughs> I mean, no, I, I, I think I caught on to that whole bit of like, if you need a question answered, like utilize some of those forms kind of late uh, because I was always the person that was just like interacting a little too much and then getting burnt out by the interactions. So I, I wish I had that piece of advice going into it. 
Um, I, I guess like, I don't know if this is maybe answering it for you, Nathan, but I think one thing that was important for you as far as like getting connected and it, it seems like for you was like knowing people locally and, and having that oh, influence of people. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have retics if it weren't for people like Aspen Mahan, who we just had on for the wildlife photography episode and Richard Bilbo, who, you know, works closely with reach out reptiles. Everyone knows the Bilbo line at this point, but yeah, I think, you know, I, I don't know if it comes down to just what I do professionally with the teaching, but it seems like local community definitely fills my cup a little bit more than the online community. Yeah. But it, feel, it I, I'm seeing more and more as I get into this, like I said, it's just like I can utilize that online community in a different way where I don't have to have it take from me instead of fill my cup. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, that's why I, I wanted to ask you that. I feel like you gained a lot from like your, your local people and, um, I didn't look there right away. Um, you know, and I'm fortunate that now James and Sean are coming over and they're able to get a lot of that experience and, and gain that locally. Um, I'm a very yeah. tactile person though, just in nature. If I don't have that tactile experience with something, I'm not going to I was going to say, that's that 102 autism score right oh, there. Oh, my God. I knew you were going to bring that up. Uh, no, I mean, it, I, I have to connect with it on a physical level before I, you know, pull the trigger. It's not just a pure informational research thing that drives a passion in me. It has right. to be some kind of connection in person. Yeah, it's a valid point. One of the things that's really helped me is, like, I hate. I hate talking to people. I hate reaching out to people, but I made the effort, I don't know, probably just over a year ago, maybe two, just to reach out to people who I, I knew they're in the UK and so local to me. And I like the stuff that they were posting just to say, hi, what's going on? Like, what, what are you into? Like retic wise, what are you, are you planning on breeding? Stuff like that. And through that, I've, you know, I've found people that, I will now never talk to it again and avoid right. like the plague. But I found a, a, like a small group of friends who I talk to every day now and they are great. And, you know, we, we, we've meet, met up a couple of times now and I don't think I could make it through the retic community still sane without having <laughs> a little group of sane people around me just to, is that right? Right. Exactly. With, you can also get a sense too on social media, like who are the assholes that you don't want to message and who are the people that seem kind of a little bit warmer and inviting that you can message? <laughs> I'm not sure if I should answer that. But, no, um, I would say that's my observation at least. Like oh. there's definitely people that I see their interaction and I'm like, yeah, I'm probably not going to message them. And then there's people like, like Eric Lee, right? I, I sparked up a conversation with Eric Lee, not interested in an animal or anything, but just his online presence made me feel safe enough to want to reach out and talk to him. Oh, I thought you were going to start getting controversial. <laughs> oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. Yeah, um, yeah it, it, it can be 50 50 in my opinion you can either get there people can be either really lovely and or you know not want to talk to you and if they don't want to talk to you they'll tell you very very quickly yeah exactly um, um so i go. think we've been probably we've been going for just over two hours now we should probably <laughs> wrap up a couple last questions <laughs> okay give give us your your right. hot view give, that, that, yeah. that can't that can't be left behind yeah give us a, a one or two more fire questions and we'll, we'll wrap we'll, it up. we'll try we'll try to answer them as fast as possible. i do also want to respect uh, the patreon patreon asked a few questions so maybe we'll pull two patreon questions out for you to answer at the end yeah yeah so i would uh I would hate myself if I didn't at least mention that people should be collecting their retic sheds, uh, make sure they're dry, put them in a bag, label as much information you have on that snake as possible, morph, pos heads, localities, percentages. I think they even want size, but as much as you have, it, you don't have to do all of it. Bag it up, 
and either send it to Rare Genetics Inc. And you had an episode with them, didn't you? Yeah. So uh, you can watch that episode just to double check what they're all about. Um, send it to them, or if you're in the UK, send it to me. I'm going to do a big package to them all at once, and that will really help the community as a whole. Yeah. And, and if you guys are wondering how long sheds can last and what's like, as long as you can get like a quarter size piece and get it in a Ziploc bag, they, they will last plenty long. Yeah. And my final question <laughs> is, uh, what's the largest animal you could take in a fight? <laughs> nice. I was hoping this, this question wouldn't be skimmed over. <laughs> And I, think, and I feel like I really need some time to think about it, but I don't think it's that big. <laughs> I think as seasoned snake handlers, I guess, we also have a bit of a cop-out answer and saying, oh, yeah, we could take a 25-foot retic. I think it would be hairy. It would be hairy for sure. Do I have but a shovel? Re- <laughs> like, no, you don't, you don't get anything. It's caveman style. Okay. I think... You know, it would be hairy, but I reckon, well, actually, saying that, I almost did get killed by my 10-foot wildcourt male. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I feel like it depends on the type of species, because, like, I, I feel like a, a an octopus would suffocate me, but, like, I feel like I could take a large dog. Um you think you could take a large dog? I I, as long as, I feel like as long as, as long as we're looking at each other, um, I would rather have a bad day with any of my big retics over a dog. Oh, me too. Um, but okay, what's your definition of your big retic? It's a nine foot retic. Ten, ten foot, yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, I mean, a dog would probably that'd be dicey. Um, I mean, largest, largest. Even one of these day. guys, with all these stupid little cats that are jumping behind me on nah, a bad cats, day. Dude, no, dude, cats are their their behavior so spur. There's no predicting what the hell a cat's gonna do, man. Um, love cats, but also like if a cat wants to kill you, it will. That's why everything is on their terms. Uh, largest animal I could take in a fight is is kind of a, a broad question to ask too, because like there's so many tiny animals that can kill you <laughs> so easily. Can um, I just clarify? Do you think you'll lose to a house cat? So I think I, a house cat is going to send me to a hospital. I think at the end of the day, it's going to be in a grave. But I don't yeah. want to get into a fight with a with a house cat. Yeah, I don't. House, house cat, I got. It's not going to be fun afterwards. If it's no, I'm going to be terrible situation. Yeah, I'm, I'm going right, to. So, so what's your largest animal, Lucas? <laughs> Do you want me to say what I think? I might. Yeah, I would love to hear what you think. If I could also choose the sex of the animal i think i could take a a large female deer like a doe without antlers is an important part i think i think you go for the legs i think that's wishful thinking what no i feel like one one well-placed like hoof cook kick to the to the temple and you're done yeah but they've got to rear up first you can dodge that yeah just don't stand behind it (laughs) yeah um I don't know. This is a good debate. Like I'm, I'm still over here, like trying to, to like think of the classic. Like, can I take a bear? But no, clearly, oh, no. I, can't. clearly I can't. Um, I think Nathan's sitting there thinking, um, I might struggle with a guinea pig or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, guinea pig. I got any Nathan. day. Let's square up. I'm, I'm ready. Um, <laughs> what about a big guinea pig, a capybara? Oh no, I'm not, not messing with that heat. I mean, again, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going out of my way to pick a fight with a capybara, but I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like again, I, I've seen capybara behavior. Um, I, I think if it's my life or the capybara's life, I'm winning. Like okay. that, that, there's not, I'm, I'm taking. Like again, I'm gonna be hurt, but I'm, I'm killing that capybara. I'm done thinking of this in such broad terms. What's the largest animal you could handle in a hairy situation? disregarding all the small animals that can kill you very easily yeah so like let's let's we're not talking about like i I got a llama all day 
a Come llama. On. I'll Dude, spit a back llama. at it, throw bows, like we got it. Dude, llamas are savages. Yeah, that that's um, crazy. Yeah, like llamas are up there with ostriches. Like I'm they not are, messing. Puff with... up your chest, run back at them. Maybe like, not pack it because they're smaller. Um, I don't, dude. That that's a. I mean, you you make a good point. I feel like a deer, a female deer, is a sizable animal. That that, um, I don't know. You get the right position and just get your hands around the throat and just not. This is getting bad. This is getting coyote. Bad. I don't maybe. Be... You're not doing yourself favors, Nathan. You're going for ones with teeth and claws. Yeah, like... but they're skittish by nature. I'm just trying to think of like reasonable <laughs> answers here. Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen a guy like roar his way out of a mountain lion fight. I think that video was from my neck of the woods. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. It actually, I think it wasn't Utah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was um, Utah. Yeah. So, is it life or death? Like, do I have to yeah. square up with it? Yeah. It's for some reason, aliens have their own Royal Rumble and they put you in a room with this animal. You're both naked. Gladiator for, style. Love gladiator it. style. What only one makes out alive, you don't have you just gotta like live in its natural habitat, so you can't sit there and go, Oh, I'll just take a shark on land. Why can it be at my it. house? Like, why has it gotta be at their house? <laughs> oh, okay, Lucas. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, deer's a good point again. I'm taking a capybara, capybara is not gonna be my, my ending, um, but that's the biggest. <sighs> trying to think of something that doesn't have um you know he makes a good point like i'm not gonna pick anything that like if it happens to bite me in the neck i'm dead right um you know i think how do you kill a large snake first off without weapons <laughs> <laughs> uh. you you youtube uh, viewers will appreciate that one <laughs> sorry yeah, think, for all the audio I think, listeners <laughs> i think i'm gonna um yeah i'm sorry to st i mean yeah deal deer capybara um you know may maybe a like a, a baby you know maybe like a baby a, is is like a, a a young moose bigger than a female deer that doesn't have like very sharp well, you are wild would, yeah that's yeah over a llama I, dude, Just have you ever have you ever have you looked at a llama in the eye, man? Versus a moose, they look like psychopaths. Have you seen a moose attack on film? It's maybe terrifying. Maybe terrifying. Those things I'm, are yeah, ruthless. I'm, I'm mess with a moose. You do not mess with any moose. You know what? Give me an uncoordinated two-day-old giraffe. I got it. <laughs> That's a big animal. That's a big animal. I got a two-day-old giraffe all day. Like that, that, the, that thing that can barely walk. Around, I'm, but... I'm kicking those knees in. It's falling on the floor. We're we're DDTing it just Lucas like said. just wants something with the same the same disadvantage that he has. Take it out <laughs> knees, by the knees the issues. and then have you seen and then deal with it from knees. there. Drop knees. Like They're high. Big. Yeah. That, that doesn't <laughs> mean it doesn't mean you can't punch them. <laughs> and also, I swear they like can run from like 30 minutes old. Yeah, uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I I watched TV. His once. answer, not mine. I chose a llama. Okay, Much he said reasonable. llama. I'm saying a like you know, no no older than two day old giraffe. And I'm going with a female dick. Okay, that's the weirdest. <laughs> that was a great question. <laughs> um, Patreon members, I love you guys, but I want to end the episode on that. Thank you. I was like, I I I, that, I, I don't know that we can end it better. We're not we're not no. topping. Um, ne next episode. Yeah. Luke, uh, we appreciate you. Thank you for staying up as early as you did. And uh, uh, do you mind? Uh, do you have a, a social media with your snakes? Like, do you want to share where people can reach out? Uh, yeah. So it's currently Dagba Exotics. Uh, so Dagba is like Luke Skywalker planet with Yoda. <laughs> nice. For those who don't know, and on Facebook, I'm just Luke Mike William. If you send me a friend request, I'll accept. Awesome. Um, Luke, appreciate you. We'll probably see you here on a Zoom meeting here in a week or so. And um, yeah, have a good one, dude. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, guys. Well, a hundred in was, the books. Yeah, that was fun as hell, man. Um, I, I, I knew it would be. I really And that's why I was like, 
yeah if if we're gonna have any patreon member like Looks go like through that hundred that hundred mark yeah that, that's the one to do so no um, uh once again we just want to thank luke for having uh the time out of his day to sit here with us and bs for a little bit that's super cool um thank you for everyone who's listened if you've listened to a, all 100 episodes drop a comment that's that's awesome like um that that's the kind of stuff that keeps lucas and i sitting down every week not taking weeks off until 100 episodes uh it's the the kind of motivation that we need thank you to our discord community um our patreon community they you know without them this episode literally would not happen Perfect. so um yeah if you're thinking about retics if you're curious about retics you want to talk about retics go over to patreon.com slash the retic lounge follow us there um any insights any comments you have to any of our episodes make sure to drop a comment like subscribe that just helps us get out to more people out there and we'll see you in a couple weeks instead of one week yeah see you, everyone sounds nice Bye. it does <laughs>